Yeah, my mom was obese. So I was in Weight Watchers at age five. Uh, my mom was morbidly obese, died actually with her third cause of death as obesity, severe obesity. So just witnessing that as a young child, having you know hundreds of pounds gained and lost is pretty intense when you think about it, just from a child's perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, she was an Overeaters Anonymous, so the 12-step program was on the kitchen table. So I was really aware as a young child uh, what it was like to you know, have food compulsive eating disorder, to have like food as a celebration and also as a suffering, you know, and so on and so forth. So it was a really strong dynamic that uh, was put into my life early on. Okay. And what about you, Penelope? I, uh, I was overweight my whole life, actually, like always a little overweight. And it didn't happen until we moved to California, which was like our fourth move. And I went to this public school. It was my first time going to public school. And everyone there was very, very skinny. And I was kind of like really sticking out like a sore thumb. And everyone told me that it was okay to be overweight and that it was fine. And all my friends were encouraging me to eat junk food. And I had a 7-Eleven at the bottom of my hill. And I actually would walk down the bottom of my hill, go to 7-Eleven, eat all the chips and donuts that I was never allowed to eat because my mom's a health fanatic. Mm. That was never in the house ever. So even since I was a little girl, I was eating like five boxes of pizza and like three bags of chips. And it was just something I would do like in private and hiding. But it got so bad, I started stealing money from her. Ooh. And then I was eating junk food behind her back and shoving it in the closet and hiding it in trash cans and bins outside. I was so like, I was just so addicted to food. Mm -hmm. And then as I gained more and more weight, like it started coming on really fast. Uh, COVID had started to happen and I was so depressed and so anxious. I had to switch schools actually because I was gaining so much weight and I had so much, so many more health issues as a, you know, a side effect of gaining the weight. So I had panic attacks in the hallways. I was, you know, depressed and anxious. I was even suicidal. I remember looking up how to kill myself on the internet because I was like so like sad and so with myself and my body I wore potato sacks like I would just wear like sweatpants and sweatshirts and I like didn't care about my self-image at all like didn't care about makeup didn't care about my hair and then I had therapists and doctors telling me that it was okay to be overweight that I was beautiful and that there was nothing wrong with me and I believed them. My friends fed me fried Oreos. The only person who told me the truth is my mother, mm -hmm. who no one likes listening to their parents. And I hated her for telling me that I was like needed to get off my butt and open my curtains because all I wanted to do was sit in my room and vape and not move my body. But I knew that I had to. And so when COVID hit, I had to see myself every day in the mirror. And that was hard because I had to see someone who was really ugly and someone who just wasn't me. Like it didn't represent who I really was. Mm. And one day I was just like, oh my gosh, this is not me. I don't even recognize this person in the mirror. I can't believe this is what I look like. This is, I've like let myself go so far, I don't even like recognize myself. And that was like the day that I decided I needed to lose the weight, despite what social media and the body positivity movement told me. Because even on social media, people were like, oh, it's fine to be overweight. You're beautiful. There's nothing wrong with you. Like being big is beautiful. And I believe that. I truly believe that so much to the point where I was taking selfies some days. I was taking selfies of myself and being like, oh, I'm so cute and I'm so gorgeous, even though I was over 300 pounds and couldn't even go up the steps. So it was like a really tough battle that I had to go through all the time. And then one day when I realized, I, I literally deleted social media off of my devices for mm. two years and I just grinded and lost 140 pounds in 18 months. But it took so much discipline and consistency to like get off social media so it wasn't a distraction, work out every day so that I didn't have a choice or an option to be lazy, you know, wake up early every morning so that I had to work out, so that I had to do something with my time and then eat, eat better, which was, that's like a whole other story we'll get yeah. into. Well, it was but. really sheer desperation, you know, yeah. from a mother's perspective, like, what do you do? Yeah. The doctor is saying, like, don't talk to her about it. It's going to cause more of a problem. The therapist is saying, don't talk about it. You are the problem. Wow. And so it's like, like it, 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 I, as a mother of an obese teen, which I'm sure there are a lot out there, mm -hmm. it's like, and they're there wasn't much support available. I mean, the school tried what they could. The therapist did what she could. We had group therapy. I mean, I, I had no idea what to do. Yeah. And it was really like a moment of desperation. And we're like, we're going we're gonna to step it out. And that's, what, what did that feel like as a, as a mother? Completely helpless. Mm. 
and hopeless. And I thought I dodged the bullet. Like, I grew up in this paradigm where my nickname was Fatso, and my mother died at 59. She doesn't even have a grandmother. And I felt completely desperate. Like, I thought I had dodged this bullet. I got a bachelor's and a master's degree in nutrition. I studied food as medicine. I studied nutritional psychology. Like, I've helped thousands of people lose weight and regain their health, and my own daughter. Like, this is ridiculous. You know, like, you try your best as a parent, but this was just um, really a moment of desperation. And really, I had to get real. Mm. I had to really look in the mirror and I had to look into my heart and I had to look at like the subconscious patterning that she was actually bringing to light. And that was some deep work. And it took me facing some demons and getting deeper into my ability to accept what was yeah. and still hold the possibility of her making the changes that were required for her life, mm. frankly. And uh, it was spiritual, it was mental, it was emotional. Um, but I actually had to really do the work because it was like she was showing me something that I, I didn't see, was I couldn't see. Yeah. How, how transparent was were the conversations between you two at the time? Because you, you were saying you were hiding, you know, hiding food in places and sneaking off to places. And I mean, th that's one of those, it's one of those habits where the results are visible, right? So there are habits that can you can genuinely hide and you can do things and no one if you don't talk about it, no one sees it, no one knows it. But something like that, it's weight's coming from somewhere. Yeah, and she won't let me help her, right? Yeah. And so true. And so it was pretty transparent. I mean, I was kind of a mess. <laughs> I mean, it was messy. Um, I remember going on DoorDash and ordering like junk food and like hiding it from you. Like I, it, the DoorDash person would come, I'd grab the box and then like run to my yeah. room and it's he'd like be addict, like drug addict baby <laughs> yeah he'd be, it's so true Zuby. Zuby, food is just i think it's even worse than drugs okay. because you have to literally face food every day of your life but with drugs you can cold turkey and never see it again but with food you can't do that well then the hippocampal pathway like the brain the neurobiology of it mm -hmm. of addiction isn't that much different right it isn't any different and you put you know herbicides fungicides pesticides you put additives preservatives chemicals in the food you put that in your body and the highly palatable foods high in fat sugar and carbs you're, you're gonna shift your brain into addiction mm -hmm. And those bacteria that are in your gut microbiome are calling out for more of it. So it is very similar. Yeah. I'm curious about the what was going on in your mind psychologically during this period. I mean, what, what's the time period? So you said you started to lose weight in 2020? It was 2020, right? Yeah. 2019, 2020, yeah. 2019, 2020. 2020. So it was just before COVID because we okay. put you in that special school because you wouldn't go to school. <laughs> right. Your social anxiety and your ang it had gotten so bad. It was pre-COVID. And was that yeah. because of your... It was because of my weight. weight. Okay. I didn't have any of these problems until I started gaining weight. And so mm -hmm. I started, when I started eating massive amounts of sugar and flour and started gaining weight like weekly, then I started getting depressed and anxious. People at school were like cutting themselves and doing like self-harm. So I literally did the same thing just okay. to fit in as I was gaining weight. Okay. I, I had so much anxiety. I couldn't even leave the house. Like she's saying, I didn't even show up to school. I missed 120 days of school in eighth grade. And legit it, panic attacks. Legit panic attacks, like I said in the hallway. Like everyone could hear me in high school. It was so embarrassing. And it was all because of the food. Like I literally swear it was. Yeah. Because once I lost the weight, it all of these problems went away. And the I, sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. I couldn't like I had like up uh, panic attacks in my sleep basically. You couldn't even go upstairs. I couldn't even go up the steps. I went to a school that had like I don't know how many flights of stairs do you think there were? I don't know. There was at least like 10 flights of stairs to get to my room that I was stuck in with a bunch of depressed people who were put there because they were so depressed and sad. And I had to go walk up those flights of 10 stairs and I couldn't even get up one. Couldn't even get up one. I had to go every day and I couldn't even get up Just one getting, flight. getting out of breath? Just getting out of breath. Just yeah. getting out of the car was hard. Mm. Getting out of bed was a, like, that was a workout. Like, why would anyone want to live that way? I always ask myself, why would people want to live this way? Or why would people preach to live this way? Because it's, like, on Body Positive, they never showed me that side. Like, there were never, ever videos, and I still don't see videos online on social media. Like, this is the negative side of being overweight. This is the struggle I have being overweight every day. No one talks about it. But if they did, like, if I saw that when I was gaining the weight, I might have for a second been like, Wow. Okay. Maybe I don't want to get to that point. Mm -hmm. But when you're overweight, it's hard to see past these things because you're kind of brainwashed. You kind of brainwashed yourself into thinking everything's fine and I am beautiful. Like some people do brainwash themselves into that. And that movement, the body positivity movement, brainwashing people to think that about themselves doesn't help the person who's already addicted to food.